is necessary. Welcome to the uh, Late Show, right here on CBS. I am the host of the Late Show. My name is Dave Letterman, America's most beloved television personality. I, uh, I hope everybody, uh, rhythmic clapping, there goes the rhythmic clapping. I hope everybody here had a uh, lovely weekend. I want to tell you something. I had a delightful Father's Day. I, had, I got some great news on Father's Day. Really. Here, here's what it is. I heard that my my son, Dave Jr. You met Dave Jr., of right? Of course. This is great news. I heard now, I was notified Sunday, that Dave Jr. will be tried as a juvenile for Grand Theft Auto. Oh, congratulations. That's great so news. much better. Great news. Thank you. I'll send him your love. I used to babysit him. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you're coming to New York City during the summer, take a chance, take an opportunity to go to one of the New York City area beaches. It's just wonderful weather, spectacular, beautiful, very exciting. And you know, when you go to a New York City beach, the experience is a little different. You know, for example, how? Well, for example, you pick up a seashell and you hold it to your ear, you'll, you'll hear a mob informant begging for his life. Oh. That's a... break and I went up to Central Park and I was watching the, the Broadway Show League and the Broadway Show League is uh, kids uh, who are in various Broadway shows are running uh, now in New York City they have a league they play softball in Central Park it's a great tradition I bet it goes back like 50 60 years so I went up there today and it was interesting uh, I, I saw the cast of the bring in defunct bring in the noise playing you know and now listen to this turns out bring in defunct bring in the noise can't bring in the runner from third uh -huh. right it's joe morgan of course good guess excellent guess so anyway um bring in the noise bring in the funk we're playing the uh, cast of cats listen to what happens they hit like a grounder to the shortstop for cats you won't believe this so the guy just plays with the ball for an hour until he gets bored <laughs> Gentlemen, there's a uh, new study from the AMA. You may find this interesting. According to the new study from the AMA, 10.34 p.m. is the time precisely most American couples are likely to have sex. 10.34 p.m. I know, many of, many of you looking at your watches now, like, maybe you're going to get lucky, but 10.35 is precisely the time the guy says, that was great, where's the remote? So, you know, think about it. If your husband says he's got to catch the 1034, he may not be talking about the train. <laughs> 1034, girls. 1034. <laughs> that is, gentlemen, I find this kind of strange, kind of surprising, kind of disturbing. It looks like, it looks like O.J. Simpson is going to be engaged. 
I read about this in the paper. Did you read about this? Yep. Looks like he is going to get engaged. The uh, lucky girl is a woman by the name of Gretchen Stockdale, and she is a Victoria's Secret uh, model. You know, uh, they model, they wear those uh, very flimsy, uh, kind of see-through uh, negligee kind of things. You know, flimsy, see-through, sort of like someone's alibis, that kind of thing. But anyway. You know Dave Jr., right? I used to babysit him. I'll give him your love. I held him in my arms. Uh, I'm not too optimistic about this engagement or the marriage because as soon as it was announced that O.J. was engaged to Gretchen Stockdale, uh, the dogs on Bundy started barking again. So I think that's a bad sign. I see. You're booing me, and I understand, of course. Uh, but anyway, uh, if Gretchen Stockdale is watching, I just have one thing to say to you, Gretchen. Do, do yourself a favor. Memorize these numbers, 911. <laughs> We have a lovely program for you tonight. In addition to our usual lineup of fine guests, somebody in our studio audience tonight is going home with a complete set of lovely patio furniture. You know, you know, that guy does not have a patio. You don't have a patio. On the program this evening, ladies and gentlemen, a lovely, talent, a fine woman, and a great actress, I, I think. <laughs> I just kind of made that up as sort of your generic intro. But in this case, you know, I believe it just might apply. Vanessa Williams is on the show this evening. Also, the star of The uh, Lonely Guy, Jonathan Silverman, is here. And uh, wonderfully interesting woman, auto mechanic, Lucille Treganow. Now! Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to my good friend, Paul Schaefer. This answers the question, do you have to take a test to become a talk show host? Here's the answer to that question, no. It ain't, it ain't the lonely guy. It's the single guy. That's cool. I introduced the guy, Jonathan Silverman, I said, the star of the lonely no, guy. Well, wasn't... it ain't the lonely guy. It's the single guy. So, but you know, many times single guys are lonely. Ah, so there you go. There you go. Sometimes for a lonely single guy, 10.34 p.m. never comes. <laughs> It ain't happening. You know what? I guess uh, this is no secret that I do this every summer, and, and I don't know why. Well, I do know why, because it's fun, because it keeps me in touch with the people. Every summer, I take a part-time job. You know what I do, I right, do, Paul? I do. And uh, it began this weekend, and uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I uh, work part-time at a Taco Bell out of New Jersey. Yes. <laughs> it's true. I, uh, what I do is I work right in there in the kitchen, and I have the headset on, and I take the drive-through orders. You know, when people drive through in their car, and they talk into, like, an external speaker, and then I'm in the, the restaurant itself, the building there, uh, and uh, Casa del Taco, and I take their orders, and then I begin the process of uh, making the food and getting it to them. So I am the representative of Taco Bell. I'm the first voice that people hear when they drive through to order through the external speaker. You know what I'm talking about? Of course I yeah, am. all right, here we go. Here's me at my part-time job, Taco Bell in New Jersey. It's okay with that. Hi, uh, welcome to Taco Bell. What do you want? Hi, can I have a kid's meal with a soft taco? Are you Mexican? No, I'm not. If, if you're Mexican, the meal's half off. Hi, welcome to Taco Bell. Two soft taco supremes. You know, uh, uh, we had some trouble. The, the kid that was supposed to come in and turn stuff on this morning uh, didn't come in. Uh, all we got today is like a, I can get you a grilled cheese sandwich. 
Well, I can put taco sauce on it, all right? Okay. Uh, what do you want to eat today? Three light chicken soft tacos. How about a burrito? No, thanks. How about a big burrito? No, thanks. Yeah, how about the biggest damn burrito you ever laid eyes on in your life? You know this? How about a burrito so damn big we got to strap it to the roof of your car? How about that, sir? Would you like that? <laughs> Welcome to Taco Bell. Thank you. Do you have any hair nets? No. Because we think that we're going to get like a surprise visit later on from the Board of Health. Hi, welcome to Taco Bell. How you doing? How you doing? Do you mind if I call you Pedro? Yeah, whatever. Hey, Pedro, what's up? What's on your mind? What's happening, my man? What's going down, Pedro? What are you having for lunch today, Pedro? Hold on. What? What? Hold on. For what? What are you doing? I'm looking at the menu. Looking at the menu. There's nine things on the menu. Come on, Einstein. Pick something. <laughs> What can I do for you, Kenny? Not so Okay, it'll be about 90 minutes where we have to special order that. For not so supreme. Not so supreme is about an hour and a half. Well, yeah, we actually need a, need a day's notice on that one. i tell you what, Pedro, it's your lucky day. How'd you like to come into the restaurant and meet the people who are preparing your lunch? That's Kim. This is Pedro. That big boy, isn't he? And your name? Julieta, thank you. you're making his lunch? Yeah, no, there's, there's no customers right now. So uh, with this lull here, we'll use the, the PA system to, to get drum up some business, okay? Hey, come on in. We got three tacos. We got burritos and three tacos. Here's, a, here's Eric, the manager. Three tacos. Come and get them. How about a beverage? Nope. How would you like to come in here and stick your head under the Pepsi machine? <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Jennifer. Jennifer, what can I do for you? I need four soft tacos supreme and a bean and cheese burrito. Jennifer, I've custom uh, customized a taco for you. Oh, you have? Yes, I have. I think you'll I think you'll be very impressed when you see it. There you go. Enjoy that. Thank you very much. Hello. Look, can I have a, a choco taco? Hey, how'd you like to come in and stick your head under the Pepsi machine? All right. Just get in there. Make it easy on yourself. Holding your glasses. Just don't play around. Just get in there and get your beverage and get the hell out. There we go. Yeah. That's right. It's my Taco Bell. We gotta go away. We'll be right back. Nice to have you with us, folks. Thank you. To mean a lot to him. Yeah, being proud as a juvenile. We're all Not very excited. And uh, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I'm showing you about my uh, part-time summer job working at Taco Bell. I want to tell you something. If you've not enjoyed the fine food at Taco Bell, you're missing a bet. Do yourself a favor. Get your ass out to a Taco Bell. That, I know. That's the, am I right? Is that stuff Here's my... Here's what I like. And one time, one time I ate 16 of these. One time I ate uh, 16 Burrito Supremes, no meat. That's the key. No, no meat. meat. I ate 16 of them. And the other one, another favorite of mine, is the regular taco with as much taco sauce, the hot sauce, as they got in the county. Bon appetit, as they say in old Mexico. So here now, me working my part-time job at the Taco Bell out there in New the Jersey. Taco Bell. Where's your weekend? I had the family come over for a visit and uh, between you and me, I didn't really get my ass out of the hammock all weekend. <laughs> Hello, somebody out there? Yeah, I want one three cheese melt with no beef. Do you make it with, ch with chicken or no? Uh, uh, actually, today we're making them with goat. <laughs> we're going two salt taco supremes. Yeah. Two salt taco supremes. Right. You got that? Okay, let, let, let me interrupt here, sir. I'll tell you what. When, when you're done eating your lunch, do me a favor. You gotta swear you'll do this, all right? What? Take your car to Tune Up Masters. Oh, I'm gonna get that fixed. Honk the horn, ma'am. Why? We're testing the equipment. This has something to do with the microwave oven. I'm gonna have to ask you to speak up. I can hardly hear you. I want two tacos, supreme, soft. 
and one original. Okay, we, uh, you know, the Taco Supremes, we only, uh, we only have them in the hard. All right, I'll take two hard ones and also a 99 cent three cheese melt. Four Taco Supremes and one Nacho Supreme. Can you order a little more food? What? But uh, I, I am one Taco Supreme away from being employee of the month. So now when I say, when I, when I call out beverage, you say Roger. Pepsi. Roger. Diet Pepsi. Roger. Slice. Roger. Mountain Dew. Okay. Slice. Roger. I'm not going to pay for eight and two tacos. Yeah, but I'm going to put you down for eight. You understand what I'm saying? So the, the paperwork will look like you ordered eight. All right, no problem. I'm and, and I'm going to have to charge you for the whole thing. And then, then, but then, if you give me your address, I can reimburse you. Not that, buddy. I ain't doing that. I'll just send you like a check in, in a month. Dude, man, I don't have any more money. What do you want me to do? Listen to me. I'm going to give you the money back, all right? Look, forget it then. Jesus. You come in. You take the order. And, and when you come to the window, like you don't know me, okay? How you doing? Uh, oh. We don't know each other, right? We don't know each other. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. yeah. We'll take care of your order. One small Pepsi. All right. No, no, slow down, ma'am. I am very, very tired. I am just getting over the worst case of stomach flu I've ever had in my life. You sound familiar. I'm the manager, Kenny. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. We'll get your food. You'll be on your way. Are you Howard Stern? That's right. I am Howard Stern. Top 10 signs, you've hired the wrong kid to mow your lawn. Uh. This is the lawn mowing season. People hire kids to mow the lawn, do the yard work. Top 10 signs now, you may have made a mistake when you hired the kid to mow your lawn. By the way, Dave Jr., you know Dave Jr.? I know him well. I'll send him your love. It'll Please mean a lot do. to him, sure. Number 10, he shows up with a pair of manicure scissors and a Ziploc bag. Number 9, turns a goat loose and says he'll be back in three weeks. Number 8. His nickname, the Unimower, number seven. On the side of his mower, you notice stenciled silhouettes of 13 cats. Number six. Stops every 15 minutes to smoke some clippings. Number five. Using your riding mower leads LAPD on a three-hour low-speed chase. Number four. He's always trying to impress you by stopping the mower blades with his head. Number three. He somehow manages to mow the hood ornament off your Lexus. Number two, every week he tries to match your lawn to Dennis Rodman's hair. And the number one sign, you've hired the wrong kid to mow your lawn. No toes. There you go. All right, we're going to go to commercial. We'll be right back with Vanessa Williams. First guest is a terrific actress, or as Marla Trump says, actress. She's also a fine dancer and singer who has received nine, nine Grammy nominations, and now she's making her debut as a big-time motion picture star in the big summer action blockbuster film Eraser, which opens on Friday. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the lovely, the talented, the multi-faceted, multi-fee, multi-faceted. Why don't you get some white out? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Vanessa Williams. being here. You look, uh, 
you look wonderful. You look, uh, what have you done there? You got what something going done? on. You look all yeah. summery. I look summery, and uh, I'm a movie star now. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Is this your first big time the motion first picture? First big I mean, starting off with Arnold, huh? Can't did, get any bigger than that. Did you have to audition for this? Did you have to read? Did you have to go out and... Uh, I actually flew myself out for the part. Maria boy, Schreiber. your arms must be exhausted. <laughs> I didn't remember that idea. Uh, uh, Maria Shriver had suggested me. She's uh, married to Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm -hmm. yep. And uh, she's got a lot of pull in that household. Uh -huh. She said, Arnold, I think... Well, there's uh, plenty to pull in that household, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? I, don't, I have no idea. Exactly. I yeah, guess yeah. Uh, she was a fan and suggested that I go out and... Mm -hmm. Tell us about the film. What exactly is the film? It's one of these things where... I, I know what it is. Arnold uh, is dead, and they bring him back to life, and it's the year 4000 no, B.C. No, it's, it's Something now. like that. And he's got to fight Martians, right? <laughs> no, it's now, and it's in Washington, and I play a high-ranking executive called Lee Cullen, who uh, works for a defense company, and uh, she stumbles upon some information she's not supposed to know about, goes to the feds, they say, go back in, we'll uh -huh. protect you, get the disc, and of course... The feds blow are, it, are there and I almost get killed and uh, Arnold comes in. I see. Are there a lot of explosions, a lot of lasers, a lot of action, a lot of Lots stuff of explosions. Like... Actually, the big thing is the EM gun. That is what... What, what exactly is the EM gun? Electromagnetic pulse weapon. Uh -huh. well, and, and, and what uh, will that do? It, just... it not only can blow you away right. uh, like a bomb, but, but you can see But it sorts the change in your pockets. That's sure, right. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Now, and what was it like working with uh, Arnold, Mr. Uh, big Guy, Mr. Uh, Austrian, Mr. Uh, steroid, Mr. Here We Go? <laughs> Mr. He, Mr. Confidence. He's yeah. a warm, generous guy. Has so much confidence. I mean, he'll crack a joke and say, I love it. I love myself. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's, it's like, that gets yeah, on your nerves. I would think that would get on your nerves after a while. No, I mean, he's so confident. Yeah. It's, it's uh, appealing. He's a very nice man. He's been on the show many, many times. He's always been a very nice guy, and he does have a great sense of humor. Yeah. And you uh, were involved in uh, the stunts of the show. You Lots had to do your stunts, own stunts. Uh, sliding off containers. And wow, shooting. sliding off a container. Yeah, and then, <laughs> you <laughs> slid off a container? Oh, my God! And live to tell about it. Yeah, actually, I yeah. got a big, a big knot on my uh, my hip, which uh, Jimmy Kahn uh, loved to ask to see every day, by the way. Jimmy Kahn, by the way, certifiably insane. Absolutely. It's interesting. A lot of people like Jimmy Kahn are, are put away. This guy's out making movies. How does, how does that happen? Uh, speaking of sliding off a container, I can remember not so very long ago, I went to get a new pair of shoes, yeah. and I guess they were tighter, the leather was new or something, and the guy, listen to this, this puts me in the mind of sliding off the container, <laughs> the guy got the shoehorn wedged in the shoe. Ooh. <laughs> Seriously, I had to drive home like that. <laughs> It's a true story. The shoehorn wedged in the damn shoe. That's <laughs> I'm lucky to be alive. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and then you got to go to your big uh, first premiere. Went to my big premiere thinking I'm a movie star. How did that go? Red carpet. It was bigger than life. I mean, Schwarzenegger, Warner Brothers, you know. Uh, and then I got a little dust Were all of the Warner Brothers there? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. There's the Larry. Day. There's Kenny. There's Mo. There's right. Manny. And just when I thought I was uh, feeling no pain and at the top of the world, I get to the front of Man's Chinese Theater and I hear, Vanessa. Yeah. And I recognize it was Danny from high school. You know the guy in high school that picked his nose and ate it, that would smell that all the time? I had no idea. You know that guy, don't you? <laughs> he was there. He was there. <laughs> and he's here tonight. <laughs> Wow. Danny, Danny wow, was there. I could not, something. could not believe it. <laughs> that's something. I just, I took a pause there. One, because of course I was stunned, <laughs> uh, and two, you know, to make the editing easier. Yeah. Uh, well, he was there. <laughs> if I really told you what he smelled like. <laughs> wow. That's that's a first, isn't it, Paul? I think so. <laughs> Do you recall anybody talking about that in the 15 years we've been doing that? But when she talks about it, it's great. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yes, you're right. It is. Coming from you, it's poetry. Ah, so. uh, we have to pause for a commercial, and then we'll be right back with Vanessa Williams. You know, you worked in uh, Broadway here for nine months. Yeah. Live theater. You can't beat it, can you? Kiss of the Spider Woman. No. You're doing wonderful. like six shows a day? Six shows a day. Eight shows a week. 
which uh, felt like six shows a day. How do you do that? How do you how do you uh, keep from just going insane? Because uh, uh, the show is the same. The show has to be the same night after night after night. But so, uh, it changes. I mean, the audience changes. Uh, we've had wild things happen in the audience. What kind of stuff happens in the audience? Well, just we were uh, we we got some great reviews, and when I came in, they said it was the hottest show on Broadway. Mm -hmm. She's tempting. She's alluring. They said so, that about me when we opened right did here. Did they really? Oh yeah, <laughs> hottest show on Broadway. <laughs> tempting, alluring. <laughs> So uh, one particular night, I guess uh, a couple got a little too carried away at how hot the show was actually, right. and uh, we're in standing room, and uh, apparently this tall blonde lady uh, lifted up her uh, lifted her coat and let her escort uh, begin something, and they ended up going back to the alcove, which oh, the usher told me all this before uh -huh. the second act started. Yeah. Went to the alcove and were caught uh, about to... Mm -hmm. Wow! Yeah! It was a hot show, you know? <laughs> Let me get this straight. People were actually having sexual intercourse That's in the awesome. theater. That's what we're talking about. You know, I'm just too damn bad your buddy from high school couldn't have been there that night. <laughs> And then you can have one huge, disgusting story to tell us. Uh, but I was, I was thinking more in terms of what do you do in your head to keep from getting, you know, bored with the material. You know, night after night, it's the same thing. It's the same yeah. cues. It's the same songs. It do you ever is. just go nuts and make things up? Do you ever change uh, it? We, we, we didn't change it, but we had, like, technical difficulties happen. One time, uh, I had candles and dried flowers in my dressing room. and mm -hmm. Fire. Oh, this big right there's a fire. You got candles, it. That's what bar. happened. Boom! Bent Spontaneous over, combustion. My turbines caught on fire, so we had to snip off the top. They're all charred. Yeah. But when, when you're on stage, do you ever just do something crazy? You know, do you ever just, you know, like Shake it up. Yeah, shake it up. That's it. Do you ever shake it up? One time, uh, they would throw stuff. At, I had to read a letter, and they would put like pictures of their dogs and stuff, uh -huh. and write stupid things, <laughs> try to make me break character, yeah. and it never worked. Uh, Although good. one time, it did get shot by the phone. You uh, get shot, shot by, by the, the phone. phone. I had this Man. big uh, Russian moment, and I'm supposed to say Anatole and run across the stage. Da 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 da. Gunshot, and I went da 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 da. Ring. So I said, how do I get out of this? Luckily, I had no dialogue in the no, Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought you said you were shocked by the phone. You were no, shocked. shocked. Oh, shocked, shocked by the phone. By I the thought phone. you picked it up, and it was one of those where it's just like... Shocked. Shocked. Shocked by the phone. Shocked. Oh. Shocked by the phone. Not... Yeah. Thank you very much. Well... <laughs> Could be time for another programming retreat. Well, uh, and Vanessa, how will you spend your summer now? I'm doing a fish, uh, Lawrence Fishburne movie called mm -hmm. uh, Hoods about uh, Harlem in the 1930s. Well, you know, that's a great topic, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's a lovely idea for a film. Yeah, it's about uh, um, Dutch Schultz, who is the big uh, mafioso. Right. Absolutely. And Lawrence Fishburne plays Bumpy Johnson, who is the head of the Harlem underground. Mm -hmm. And uh, I fall in love with uh, Bumpy. You fall in love with Bumpy. <laughs> And hey, how can you not? And the movie, uh, the movie Eraser, you, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and others, uh, opens on... June 21st. June 21st. I hope it's a huge, huge hit Thank for you. Thank you so much. And nice to see you again. Thank Good you very pleasure. much. Vanessa Williams, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. try to adjust your set. I'm, I'm just leaning. <laughs> Shim up the damn TV. Let me tell you something. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Hey, Peppy, I'm talking to you right there. Let me tell you something. Our next guest is a talented young actor who stars in the popular television program, The Single Guy. You got that? You hear what I'm saying? All right. Please give a nice warm welcome to Jonathan Silverman. Jonathan... Nice to meet you. 
Spencer, thank you very much for uh, being on the program. Thank Why don't you, you uh, tell the folks a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? I'm from Los Angeles, California. Born and raised there. Yes, I am. Ah, good for you. And went like to school it. in the area? Uh, I, correct. At uh, actually Beverly Hills High School and uh, USC. Mm -hmm. And knew then, I guess, early on that you wanted to be in the television, films, acting, that kind of thing? I, I kind of I hoped. Yeah. And actually, I got very lucky at an early age when I was uh, 17. I, I, I got a gig here on Broadway, actually just around the corner. Really? Did a, a little Neil Simon piece called Brighton Beach Memoir. Oh, sure. Yeah. Which I then yeah. did on, uh, and on uh, film. Uh, people screwing in the audience, kids have fingers in their nose, that kind of thing? Uh, yeah. yeah. What? I don't know. I don't know. Actually, Vanessa Williams came to the show with the nose pickers. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and uh, I'll ask you the same question I asked her. Did you, would you do stuff goofing around to kind of break the tedium of the same material night after night after night after night? Uh, no, I was too scared. Yeah? Uh, terrified. How uh, old a kid were you when you were doing that? I was about four. No, no, really? no, I was, I was, uh, I did three of his plays and three of his movies, but, but I was like 17, 18, 19, stuff like so that. So you were very, very successful then as a, as a kid actor, weren't you? I, I got lucky. I got lucky. Yeah. And then how, how did you get this, uh, the uh, single guy? You know, I kind of owe this TV show to uh, Tom Selleck. Well, don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think yeah. I do. I know I do. <laughs> If it weren't for Tom Selleck, I wouldn't be sitting here tonight, ladies Thanks, and gentlemen. Thanks, Paul. What about you? Tom Selleck, all the way. God bless you, Tom him. Selleck, wherever you are, buddy. He's, he's a wonderful, wonderful man. A very handsome man, too. Oh, good-looking, sure. Yes, yes. Easy on the eyes. Hey, sure. guess what, gals? He's a hunk. I play in a yearly baseball game out at Dodger Stadium. Oh, I know what this is. It's kind of like a charity thing. And Correct. They, they, yeah, it's, it's Hollywood celebrities and sports writers. Isn't that what it is? Uh, then something like that. Or, yeah. yeah, writers who could act or play ball. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Tom is up, Mr. Baseball. I, I'm relegated, relegated to, to the outfield because at that time I didn't have a top-ten show. I, I didn't have nothing. <laughs> I was in a Weekend at Bernie's movie. So I put the schmuck in center Wait, field. you were in the Weekend at Bernie's movie? You've seen it? My God, you've done everything, oh, haven't yeah. you? Oh, yeah, I've been around. Uh, okay, so now you're playing baseball in Dodger Stadium. So I'm out in center field, absolutely terrified. Up comes Mr. Baseball, a big strapping man. We yeah. discussed that. He's handsome. And he and fancies himself a ball player. I guess he played at, like, USC or something? Uh, somewhere or yeah. another. I, I don't know where. He always wears that, you know, Detroit Tigers cap. Right. So that, that means yeah. something. And he hit a ball way over my head that I shouldn't have caught. And lo and behold, I did. Mm -hmm. And then he was up a few innings later, and, and the same thing happened, and I caught it again. A uh, director from Castle Rock uh, uh, Pictures was there. He cast me in a baseball movie called Little Big League, and because of that movie, I got the uh, single guy. Really? That, that, Actually, that's, a, that's a great Hollywood story. I brought, I brought footage. True. I brought is, footage. Is it true? No one has ever seen this before. Are you sure you're not lying to me You about will this? see me. I'm number, I think, 11. I'm the skinny guy way in center field. In now, Thompson. in high school, did you play ball? I played a little bit. Were you pretty good? I was all right. All right, let's take a look at the footage. Here we go. Dodger Stadium, ladies and gentlemen. Jonathan Silverman. Paul by Selleck. It's going yeah. back near the 370 That's mark. Right. And a great catch. Jonathan Silverman. It seemed like we saw everyone else but you, but finally, at the very last second, about you came that, in and, out of the, nowhere. and the rest is history, for God's sakes. And, and what about the, the right fielder who was loafing? You owe him your career as well. <laughs> Absolutely. He was terrified. That was, I think that was Morris Chestnut of Boys in the Hood. And and I didn't want to get in his way. No, of course you can't. But can. he called for help, so I helped him. <laughs> Actually, he could have been the single guy right now. Tell, me, tell me and, and everybody else, what we're talking about here, the single guy. What is, it, what is the show? What uh, is the premise? It's, it's, it's a television show that's on uh, that other network. The NBC. Uh, yeah. Uh, Musty TV, they call yeah. it. Uh, but you don't, you don't, you don't have to watch it. Oh no, I'm watching every <laughs> night. <laughs> you can't get me away from the Must See TV. But it's you. You're the single guy. It's me. I play. Yeah. I play a gentleman who believes he's the last single person left on the face of mm -hmm. it. Everyone in his life is, is married or has found their soulmate, has a child, and, and I got bupkis. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, you're happy doing this. You're excited it's, about this. It's a living. It's Want to go on to make more films when this is? Uh, uh, I, I, I'd, I'd like to. Yeah. 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 Actually, I just I just did yet yet another Neil Simon movie. I did, did the is movie right? version of uh, London Suite, his last play. Well, good for you. Thank Excellent. You. We'll look forward to that. Thank you very much Thank for you, being Dave. here, Jonathan. Pleasure. Jonathan Silverman. Let me ask you a question. You got a car?
Yes, I do. Do you drive often? Not too often. How many, Paul, let me ask you another question. How many miles a year do you put on the damn car? Not too many miles. Yeah, about 80, no 90,000 a year? Me Something too. like, yeah, no, less than that. Do you what know a, anything about cars? Not a, not not, a lot. I know nothing about cars. I, here's what I know about cars. Floor mats. That's all I know. Floor mats. <laughs> when that's the floor it. mats get dusty, here's what you do. You open the car door, probably put it in uh, gear, take it out of gear, put it in park there like that. Park. Open the door, take the floor mat out and just... Beat it that, on something yeah. like that. Beat it on the fender of the car, right. then slip it back in there. That gets the dust yeah, out of the well, floor. I know that much. And that, well, that's all I know. Uh -huh. yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> Our next guest, on the other hand, is an award-winning automotive expert and the host of her very own instructional cable program. She is also the author of this book right here, entitled Lucille's Car Care. Do me a favor, please welcome the Martha Stewart of auto mechanics, Lucille Treganow. Lucille. <laughs> Lucille, it's a uh, pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much for being here. And I uh, have many, many things to ask you because the truth of it is, I don't know much about cars. I don't think many people know very much about cars. And I have a question for you about the car okay. I'm driving right now. It's like a twin turbocharged gazoo or something. Huh? I don't know. It's a gazoo. It's a, a Dodge product. <laughs> and it's got like 80,000 miles on it, and it makes this noise. Just like that. Uh -huh. I've had it tuned up and everything, but it makes that noise. Right. When, it, when it's idling, you understand? Uh-huh. <laughs> now, what is that? Well, it could you could be describing an exhaust leak, of just a very minor one sometimes. Uh, so have you've had that checked? Well, I, no. Uh, well, when I get an exhaust leak, I leave it. <laughs> <laughs> Takes the edge off okay. a long drive, you know what I'm saying, Lucille? Right. <laughs> I think it might be tappets. Could be the tappets. Well, that does unless you're rather poor at making the you know repeating the noise, that doesn't sound like tappets to well, me. Well, what do tappets sound like? Well, it's more of a ticking and yeah. a steady sound. That's, that, what, that's what I'm doing. Okay, well that didn't. Okay. <laughs> so what do you do for the tappets? How can you fix those? Well, it, you have to decide whether or not you want to fix them. If it's something that's been there a long time, it doesn't get any worse. You know, there's some things with the car you may want to live with. Now, the tappets come with the car, right? They don't right. grow, no, and no, they're not like no, barnacles. No, oh, my no, God, right. we got to scrape the tappets. <laughs> got to scrape no. the tappets off the damn car. <laughs> Why you, Lucille, why don't you tell us, uh, this is a fascinating story here. Uh, tell us about yourself and how you became uh, like an empire in the automotive world now. Well, it's not really an empire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, I got involved quite by accident. I was working part-time in an auto repair shop uh, while I was trying to go to college enough to teach English. Right. And I had three children back at a time when it wasn't really easy to be divorced with three children. Mm -hmm. And so I never quite was able to stop and go back to college. But... I got really fascinated with the auto repair. You know, I had ideal learning conditions. Now, how did you get fascinated by auto repair? What is, what is... <laughs> well, I mean, see, I was in a situation where people came in and asked me questions and I didn't know. People came in, you, you took a job in an auto I, repair yeah, shop? Yeah, I was working as, doing clerical work in an auto repair oh, shop. Oh, I see, yeah. Strictly clerical work. Mm -hmm. And it was an expanding business where the owner would say, I'll be back in 10 minutes and disappear. And everyone would ask because me Because he, he was going someplace to get drunk, right? <laughs> he was. I mean, that's what they do. He was going to the bar. Am I right, Lucille? No, I don't believe He's that. He's going to go and have a little taste. He... Just have a little taste. <laughs> and so I would have, be asked questions, and I'd keep saying, I don't know, I don't know. Right. So I started studying manuals so I could fake it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to sound like I knew what I was talking about. Right. And as soon as I started learning a little bit about it, it was so amazing what happens when an automobile runs mm -hmm. that I started studying for you, real. You were fascinated by it. You were drawn to it. And now well, there's virtually uh, everything about cars that right, you understand right. and is part of your daily life. Yeah. And not many people are like that. But it seems to me that the American automotive engine has become far more sophisticated and more complicated than, say, when I was in high school. Oh, absolutely. And so I would think now you know, people have no chance of understanding what's going on. Well, but see, it becomes more and more necessary that you do learn about your car. Mm -hmm. Because it's so costly, you know, for repairs and just by doing the proper maintenance and the, the right care, driving habits and everything. So with the cost of the car, the more you know about it and are able to maintain it, the better off you're going to be. There aren't many things you can do yourself on cars anymore. What, what's the fastest you've gone in a car? You don't want to hear. No, how, what's the fastest you've gone, Lucille? What's the fastest you've gone? 120. 120. <laughs> a trick to it. A trick to go on 120? No. I mean, not getting caught. Oh, not getting caught. In, in my, my trick is I keep one eye closed okay. when I'm going 120. <laughs> but 
If you drive early in the morning, mm -hmm. when the state police are changing shifts around 7 o'clock. Donuts. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, you know how a, a supercharger works? Somewhat. I have a supercharged Volvo. <laughs> 400 horsepower Volvo. This son of a bitch does 180. <laughs> Yeah, you ought to come up to the house and take a look right. at it. Uh, have you driven it? <laughs> no, I haven't driven 180, okay. but I, you know, it, we've got... It could yeah. go that fast. It could go 180. I'd like to get it right up around the deuce, you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, right. <laughs> um, do, do, who, who are, is it, you know, the, the myth used to be that women uh, didn't know much about cars and were not as good drivers as men, and, and men knew more and were better drivers. Is that true or not true? Well, I think there's more of a level playing ground now. It used to be, you know, our society was that boys grew up, learned from their fathers to do car maintenance and learn everything, and girls didn't. Mm -hmm. But now, with the, fathers don't teach sons anymore, mm -hmm. and women are getting more independent, so that I think, with my customers coming into the shop, that I see just as many men who know nothing about cars as women. And women are trying to learn. You know, when I was a kid, I knew a lot about interior design and collecting. Uh, and your show, when, when can people see the show? Where is it on? Well, it's on Home and Garden Television, cable. And any place that you have that cable. Mm -hmm. Get the cable. Yeah, there you go. It's sure. uh, pretty much across the And country. in the Pennsylvania area, western Pennsylvania, you've got the, the Lucille's Car Care Transmission Shops. And right. Then, yeah. In Pittsburgh. And, and WQEX shows the shows. There you go. Lu Lucille's Car Care. Here she is, ladies and gentlemen. Lucille Tregonon. Thank you very much.